The gardener is all in. They are playing for keeps. And they are wrong, or so I argue. For after all, the universe is undecidable. There is no destiny. We are all making this up as we go along. Neither the gardener nor I know for certain that we are eternally, universally right. But we can be nothing except what we are. You have a choice. Welcome back Guardians. Today I want to talk about why Destiny is called Destiny. We've always had a bit of an idea to why the game is called Destiny. However, with the unveiling lore entry, The Wager, it really spells it out. So stick around to hear more about this topic. Also, as you likely know, I have a second channel that covers games other than Destiny. Currently, I'm on Escape from Tarkov. It would be great if you can check it out and see if you like the content. A link will be in the description. Warning, it is not about lore or anything to do with lore. As usual, the artwork at the beginning of this video was made by Gamma Trap. All Patreon donations go towards paying Gamma Trap for his artwork. A link will be below. This is Marlin Games, and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. When I think about answering the question, why is Destiny called Destiny, there are really two answers. One answer is from a Bungie point of view, meaning what happened during concept development that led to them calling Destiny, Destiny. And the second answer is probably why you are here, which is from a lore point of view, why is it called Destiny? I want to briefly answer that first question, how did it get its name from Bungie? An interview with Jonty Barnes by Mashable straight up details how Destiny got its name. The interview reads, we had to fulfill that passion for Halo with something else, Barnes said of his pre-development work on Destiny. It was a great driving force, there was a high pressure to eclipse our previous work. The word Destiny was originally just the project's code name. We couldn't come up with a better name, Barnes said, chuckling. It got to the point during pre-development where each member of the small team tossed out a new pile of names every Friday. None of the ideas caught on. However, and the early code name lingered. When Pete was back at Bungie, he thought it was a great name, Barnes explained. So then we did all the diligence of localizations and everything, and it just resonated with so many different territories. It just stuck. So we never changed it. So there you have it. It was originally the project's code name as a way, I guess, of trying to eclipse what they did with Halo. It was Bungie's destiny. Okay, so on to the law reason to why destiny is called destiny. One of the reasons for calling it Destiny is that Guardians are paracausal. We alter our future, our outcomes with free will. We are not bound to fate. We do not have a predetermined destiny. We are also not bound to causality, i.e. cause and effect. We break many laws of the universe using the light. We can essentially fly, we can be revived, we can throw energy balls. The light, or more specifically the Traveller, is our source of paracausality. Have a listen to the Grimoire card Ghost Fragment Vex 4. It reads, Maya, Chioma, Dwayne McNead and Shim decide to have a picnic before they send themselves into infinity. Dr. Shim shrugs. I think the Traveller did something paracausal to Venus, something that cut across space and time. The Citadel seems to come from the past of a different Venus than our own. It doesn't have to make any sense by our logic any more than the Moon's new gravity. The paracausality provided by the light is a natural defense against many of the enemies in Destiny, specifically the Vex. The Vex being an enemy race that tries to control the future, we of course are resistant to that. The lore entry React Choose Act reads, The Hydra speaks to you in your own voice. I have simulated Dull in Karu as well as I can. While Vex cannot normally account for the paracausal influence of light and darkness, I am no longer simply a Vex. And where no elegant analytical solution exists, we may apply massive computational power to generate a reasonable facsimile. This was the approach used against Saint-14. And of course, many of you who played Destiny 1 remember the Vault of Glass, where Guardians make their own fate. This being a reference to our power causality and our resistance to the Vex controlling the future. Our light and power causality is not just important for fighting the Vex, but also important for fighting the Hive. Just like the light makes us paracausal, the darkness does the same for the Hive. Have a listen to this sword logic entry about Oryx in the Books of Sorrow. It reads, But you are armed to respond in kind. Savathun's mothers have listened carefully to our teachings. 
We will not give you the deep, King Oryx. That power is for us, your gods, but we will teach you to call upon that force with signs and rituals. Small minds might call it magic. You are no longer bound by causal closure. Your will defeats law. Kill a hundred of your children with a long blade, Oryx, and observe the change in the blade. Observe how the universe shrinks from you in terror. Also remember, it's not just our enemies, like Oryx, who are paracausal, but also our allies. Remember the Awoken were born between the light and the dark, and Marasov is described as the center of paracausality for the Awoken. Remember, like Oryx, she created a throne world, a world that does not obey the rules of our universe. Have a listen to the Reverange 4 lore entry. It reads, Mara, the paracausal effects are strongest around you. Whatever's happened to us, you are the locus. I cannot overstate how subtle and how important this discovery might be. Mara, when we use radioactive decay as a trigger for simulated bombs, bombs that could harm Awoken, the trigger atoms are a thousandfold less likely to decay near you. People are literally safer when you are around. Okay, so let me tie this all together with the entry from the Unveiling Law Book, which you may have not read yet. It reads, The gardener is all in. They are playing for keeps, and they are wrong, or so I argue. For after all, the universe is undecidable. There is no destiny. We're all making this up as we go along. Neither the gardener nor I know for certain that we're eternally, universally right. But we can be nothing except what we are. You have a choice. You are the gardener's final argument. It would mean everything if I could convince you that I am the right and only way. I truly value you. To the gardener, you are means to an end. To me, you are majestic. Majestic. You are full of the only thing worth anything at all. So I've been thinking about how to better explain this, and I really like the idea of cosmic chess. So this is how I would describe it. The light, i.e. the gardener, and the dark, i.e. the winnower, are the chess players. In the beginning, they controlled all the chess pieces. However, they became part of the game. The light and the dark influenced the chess pieces, giving the chess pieces free will. Guardians are the chess pieces. Marisov is a chess piece. Savathun is a chess piece. We now have free will. We no longer obey the rules of the chess game. We can do whatever we want. There is no destiny. We make our own fate. And with that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 Law episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the word destiny to represent there is no destiny. Guardians make their own fate. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.